Hi everyone, making a change for my telescope from the Edge HD 11 inch Celestron to the Orion Astrograph Maxutoff Newtonian Telescope. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Here in the southeast, we've been under numerous days of cloudy, gloomy, wet, cold weather conditions. At least it's above freezing, but still, we're not alone. I see most of the country, the United States, is under a lot of cloud cover and very uh, dismal winter weather conditions. Uh, even up in the, the northeast and uh, across the pond, up into England, I notice it's been cloudy there as well. So lots of clouds during January and February. But yesterday, I did have a break in the clouds and I was able to test out the new rig that I set up. I took down the old 11-inch Edge HD telescope. You know, that's a great telescope for planetary observations. The focal length is 2,800 millimeters. That's a long focal length, which is ideal for the planets. However, uh, it makes it extremely difficult to track for deep space objects. You want a shorter focal length, and below a thousand millimeters is ideal. Now the astrograph, this telescope here, has a, a focal length of 1,000 meters. The objective is 190 millimeters, so that gives me an f5.3 ratio, a rather wide field of view. But, you know, setting this up was no easy task. Uh, let me explain and show you all the different uh, uh, connections needed for this rig. Well, first of all, as you can see, we've got several objects here. Uh, we got the guide scope and the guide camera, and that connects uh, into the computer. This is an onboard computer. It's a Windows 10 system. And with that, I got a USB 2 connection going right into this mini computer. Um, the uh, dew heater right here is connected with Velcro to the dew uh, straps over here. I lost a dew strap to the guide scope, the one's on the way. Uh, over here, uh, this is the guide, or the, the actual uh, uh, imaging camera. That's an Altair, um, what's this one, the Altair 294C. And with that I got the connection to the uh, autofocuser, a Pegasus uh, Cube autofocuser. All this has to be connected down into the computer as well. And then you got the, the mount itself. This mount is a um, uh, Celestron CGX mount. Uh, it can hold up, I think, 45 pounds. It easily holds up this rig here. And it has a USB connection right uh, into the uh, mount itself. So that connects into uh, the computer. It's somewhere around here on the other side. Uh, over here where it connects. So it got all these different connections along with the power supplies uh, that needed to operate the system. So it's, a, it's not just simply putting up a telescope and then pointing it to the sky and shooting. Uh, there's a lot of configuration that needs to be done. And with the cable, trying to manage the cables, this cable here I'm gonna to try to do away with eventually. That is a network cable. Uh, well, I have a network um, coming up from underground, actually goes up into my main computer upstairs, so I can con directly connect to these computers uh, from my computer to this computer here. And the other rig I have across the yard, it also has a, a mini computer uh, attached to it as well. Anyway, uh, these will uh, do all the work uh, while I remote into it uh, from the upstairs computer in the warmth of my office, but the, um, the uh, network cable seems to be snagging at times. And this system does have the capability of, of uh, Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna try to set this up as a Wi-Fi connection and hopefully do away with this cable. You know, the less cables you have, the better off you're gonna be. Because, you know, you got cable snags. I had one last night. Uh, that was no surprise, because it's the first time I used this telescope uh, configuration. Um, you, you get the uh, weight of the cables actually pulls down on the scope, makes it a little bit more difficult in, in, in guiding and tracking. Not really, uh, you know, uh, super, or not really bad, but it could cause problems. And uh, the less cables, again, the better off you're going to be.
One other thing I do want to mention that I almost had a catastrophe yesterday when I was setting up the scope. I had the camera securely fitted inside the draw tube here uh, on the focuser and it was firmly attached. That was not the issue. The issue was a hex screw over here inside the focuser which puts pressure on the draw tube uh, that the focuser uses to go up and down gave loose and in the process the whole camera unit uh, the whole camera unit fell down and as it fell it hit the grass right next to the cement block. If it had hit the cement block that camera could have shattered. I was so lucky it hit the grass. I mean we're talking twelve hundred dollars here. Oh my goodness. I was so lucky. Make sure your screws are tight. Bottom line. Since last night was the first time using this setup this year, uh, several factors I had to run through. Uh, first of all, just focusing the uh, telescope, getting a, a focus. Uh, I was finally able to target the moon and was able to focus uh, with the camera there. Uh, the guide scope, that had to be realigned and refocused and I was able to do that. I'm using the Orion uh, Starshoot Auto Guider. <laughs> It's a great little auto guider. And I'm using the uh, Altair Astro uh, 240 millimeter, um, or 240 millimeter focal length uh, guide scope to go with this. And the combination of the two are working very well. I was getting some fantastic guiding last night uh, for the Whirlpool Galaxy. I was guiding at 420 seconds in very clean round stars uh, associated with the, the guiding uh, well, in the center. One of the other targets I used to experiment with was the Jellyfish Nebula. Now I've only given it 30 minutes per frame uh, or actually the, 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 the exposure is 30 minutes. Uh, it needs a lot more than that, perhaps three to five hours at least uh, to get a good uh, view of the nebulosity uh, part of this uh, remnant of an exploding star or supernova about what 3,000 to 30,000 years ago sometime around there. I don't know I wasn't there when it happened but you can see here this reflection of this bright star should be rather circular but as you can see it's it's very flat on one end. That's a problem with the alignment I think of the secondary mirror uh, to the primary mirror. Now I'm gonna have to uh, uh, correct that uh, but the um, Jellyfish Nebula, uh, I also used Nina to set up a four panel mosaic. So I took one picture, a frame of the uh, close up view of the jellyfish, and then I widened it out by taking four different frames and four different corners, and then I stitched them together. Like I did in that last video on how to stitch the uh, uh, mosaics together. Well, since I made that video, uh, Microsoft stopped producing that stitching program so I'm looking around for other stitching programs to use. I mean I can use mine, I have it, it so it works but to uh, you know, let you know where other stitching programs are located I think you can do it in Photoshop and there's some other ways of stitching uh, images together as well but, but anyway that's that's what happened last night. Spring conditions are on the preview look at that I got daffodils beginning to bloom already and the hyacinths are beginning to bloom and my magnolia tree and the camellias, well they get me through the winter time around here. These lovely camellia bushes uh, bloom in January, February, March and April and uh, they're in full bloom right now. But you know, as far as astronomy goes, looking forward to next week as I'm seeing a big break in the weather pattern, not only here in the southeast but also looks like a good portion of the country of the United States anyway uh, showing some promising views of clear night skies uh, for uh, the upcoming week and two weeks and three weeks after that so get your gear ready because it looks like spring is on the way at least for the nighttime viewing of the sky. Well I hope you like this video and, and remember that the sky is filled with majestic wonders all in a sky near you. 
So unless you need rain, and boy, we do not need rain here right now. I'm up to about seven inches already just this year. But unless you do need rain, clear skies, everyone.